All right, yeah, yeah. So look at this. Look at this. This is a uh, this is art, a concept art, or storyboard art from an artist, Phil Langone, who uh, worked on Spider-Man: No Way Home. And look, you can see Spider-Man is fighting Mysterio in this concept art, and it's not Green hey. Goblin. It is oh. Mysterio who kills Aunt May. Mm. This is crazy. And like he obviously, so much of this art, other than the fact that it's Mysterio, is what is in the movie. The, the anger that Peter has when he's like attacking him. Right. Like uh, uh, some of this battle was, you know, used uh, at the end when they're on the the overturned Captain America shield. But like, I mean, Mysterio was going to be part of this movie at some point. It sounds like. Bro, it's so interesting. I, you know, that I had Mysterio. a feeling that he was part of the plans. I had a feeling because like I had this weird theory that like both. Toby and Andrew were Mysterio illusions, so this makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, we want to thank NordVPN for sponsoring our show today. More on them in a bit. It's so interesting. Why Mysterio? Over I think it hits more that it wasn't Mysterio. It was the Green Goblin. What? But that's just me. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you, especially how good Willem Dafoe was in this movie. Oh, he was so good. so good. Amazing. But you got to imagine the opening act of the movie. It was Team Mysterio who really ruined Peter Parker's life at the beginning of the movie. In some yeah, ways, No sure. Way Home feels like a segmented movie that way. And this kind of fits better in that true. first segment. I, I do agree. Like, I would have loved to see, have this be like a Mysterio story as well. Because like, it, he's the whole reason for the season. He's the reason why everything is happening. So like sure. having Peter fight him and uh, also the dude from A Christmas Story for uh, releasing that video. Yeah, um, William yes. Ginter Reba, <laughs> one of the weirdest character names for, for an actor named Peter Billingsley. Hey, welcome back to New Rockstars. Was Aunt May murdered by Mysterio in an alternate universe? Well, yes, according to storyboard concept art made for Spider-Man No Way Home. So is Marvel Studios leaving its best ideas on the cutting room floor? You know whose fault this is, is... Kevin! <laughs> Kevin! <laughs> Kevin! <laughs> Kevin! This is Inside Marvel, it's New Rockstar's weekly Marvel reaction show, and today we are reacting to and spending this whole episode talking about the concept art that always gets released after a Marvel film comes out from the artists themselves, sometimes from the studio when they release the art of whatever it is in a, in a book. I'm Eric Voss, here with Jessica Clemens and MT. Hello, friends. Hi, What's going I on? I love art. That's why I dress up like this. Like a little <laughs> artist. You do look like an artist. I love it. I love how you brought Thank up you. those little like art of books because I love going through those oh, books too. Um, after every Marvel movie comes out because especially the Guardians mm. of the Galaxy ones, oh, there's yeah. so much more information that you don't get in the movies or even in the um, comics. That's true. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, uh, as a kid, I grew up on visual dictionaries, whether it was the Star Wars visual mm. dictionaries, they did them for like Batman, for Superman, and uh, yeah, and for Marvel, for Game of Thrones, like the, the world of ice and fire or whatever. Like I... Love those coffee table books. So good. Uh, I will never ever get up from like a friend's house couch just reading those books. So like, hey, we're here socializing. I'm like, no, no, no. Your that. coffee table <laughs> literature is more interesting no, than you are here socializing. <laughs> I'm here reading a book. I'm here to read the parents' coffee book. I love storyboard art. I went to school for art history, and so I love looking at art, and I always will. And for She-Hulk, I was obsessed with the uh, storyboard artist that would release all of She-Hulk storyboard art. And I was like, this was insane. Also, I think there's so much story behind the art. Like the fact that they were going to use Mysterio was a huge deal. It's like you guys were planning for Mysterio. So what changed and what is staying even the little remnants that was Mysterio? Yeah, a, I, I often forget that you were an art history major, Jess. That that explains like so much of how good of a uh, visual observant analysis and analysis -er you are uh, because you, yeah, like, uh, I feel like we all need to take some art history classes and you can teach it, Jessica. Jessica to teach us exactly. how to find these things. Professor Clemens, mm -hmm. I'll be on time every class. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm always late, but I'll be only five <laughs> minutes late. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for that. So a uh, couple quick announcements we want to make. A reminder to subscribe to the Deep Dive channel. We're going to be doing some fun stuff over there starting February 17th. And hey, be sure to check out NewRockStarsMerch.com. It's the only place to get shirts, hats, and hoodies. And so much more featuring your favorite nerdy YouTube channel. And be sure to keep watching that merch store because there's going to be some Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania-inspired merch coming very soon. You can support the channel and check out all of our awesome merch options over at NewRockStarsMerch.com. Our question today. Is Marvel concept art better than the final version of these movies that we get? <laughs> uh, can I can I say immediately? Yes, go ahead. Yes, I'm going to say yes, because the concept art didn't isn't in a box. They can do whatever they really want. They can put whatever they wanted. And then afterwards, that's when they're like, we need to reel it back. Or something happens down the line where they're like, hey, we actually have to take this completely out. Redo it. 
the fact that it was Mysterio and then it was completely changed. I love the concept art. And also you get a look at what their outfits were supposed to look like before they were supposed to get in here. So it's like, how big can they go? I, I love it. I love concept art. Okay, that's just me. <laughs> yeah, and this is a, we, sh we should be fair to the directors and writers who were um, who made these movies and were handsomely paid for it. But um, the truth is that seeing the picture of something, our imaginations kind of go to the best version of it immediately. And it's easier to compare that to what we actually got. And we may have some other kind of associations with, with what we got. You know, the grass is always greener, right? No, and like to Justice's point, like, yeah, it, like the, the sky's the limit when it comes to um, concept artists imagining what, could possibly be in this movie and like it's always going to seem like oh my god I wish, we, oh, I wish we got that but at the end of the day you know like the elements need to serve the story and like if they change their minds and like there's probably a good reason for that right they always can come back to it that's the uh, that right. was the situation with and she hulk in the hallway it was just all concept art and there was a lot of concept art that they did use but a lot of concept art they did not use and i was like but they still framed it and put it in the marvel studios hallway as a look of like what could have been and what is and so it's like it's still highly regarded it's still there it's, uh, it's, it's always it's still out there part right. of the multiverse as we could say right the watcher knows okay let's actually start with another piece of mysterio concept art from spider-man no way home there's this one shot of mysterio fighting doctor strange by the statue of liberty that came out at some point last year i don't know if you guys saw this um but mysterio uh, in several different versions of this movie was planned to be the primary antagonist uh now we don't know if this was a hollow projection of mysterio but it seemed like at some point Mysterio was going to be revealed to not actually have been dead after Spider-Man Far From Home. And I go back and forth on this. I liked Mysterio as a villain, but No Way Home would have kind of been a rehash of a, it would have been like a part two of Spider-Man Far From Home in this version, as opposed to a full multiverse story. Also, do you think you would have liked it more this way? I don't, I don't know. know. It, 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 it's really hard because in No Way Home, after finding out it was like the Wizard of Oz, just a man behind a curtain was Mysterio, I was like, it doesn't have that same pull fighting Doctor Strange as the Green Goblin would. Like that was an actual like villain villain. So, but that's just me. That's how I felt about Mysterio. I was like, oh, it's just a man I, behind a curtain. I think it would have been would have been really cool if Mysterio was a part of the movie, though like not the central mm -hmm. part. I think that like having more MCU representation in that whole sinister team. Um, would have been dope. I mean, like, honestly, like, they should have had Scorpion in there. Let's be real. Um, they did nothing yeah. with Scorpion. But, like, at the very least, since this was a sequel to Far From Home, having Mysterio there as a factor and, like, being like, hey, I ruined your life, but still having Defoe, you know, mainly be, like, the the main villain of that movie, I feel like would have been a good balance between the two. Um, because Mysterio is, like, like, the main reason for the season. He's the reason why he did, did the spell in the first place. So I feel like he should have been there. Hey, you know what it could have been is Mysterio from an alternate universe. Like it could have been a Mysterio who oh. didn't die in mm. London and uh, and mm. is pissed that in this universe, Peter allowed him to die. So like maybe he was there oh. alongside Willem Dafoe as Goblin and now for Molina's Doc. I would love that. Oh. Would he have been like released with the other villains because he knew who Spider-Man was? Oh, yeah, maybe. Is that what you're saying? Oh, that's a good different? point. Yeah, he knows who he is. I mean, hey, that would have been better that than, been sick. than uh, Sandman probably or the Lizard. <laughs> look look here they try they try it would have been really dope if they alluded if that was like a raimi villain for that um that toby fought like after spider-man 3 it's like oh yeah he's one of oh. mine like you know he's my mysterio that's is that funny. your mysterio That'd hey be could it have been uh, uh what's his face bruce campbell mysterio bruce, from sam raimi's I would have loved it. alternate version I would have of his spider-man 4 like that everyone would have lost their shit bro everyone would have lost it i guarantee you the person that made the concept art was like, this is exactly what I was planning on doing. And they <laughs> took it out. <laughs> but there's also the possibility that like, you know, since Mysterio was a team and like he had a whole squad of people that had grievances against Tony Stark, that this could have just been somebody else who was just as crazy, but like somebody else that was part of the team, like maybe Guterman. I mean, it would be kind of ridiculous if it was Guterman. <laughs> but um, yeah, like it, Mysterio in the MCU sort of seems like um, something that anyone could just like pop on the, just put on the, the fish bowl and, and just go go crazy. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen that. Uh, have we? Have we not really seen that in the MCU yet? It's it's in every comic 
that someone takes someone's taken the green goblin suit and put it on and was like i'm the green goblin now <laughs> so i'm just i'm surprised they didn't actually go with that it's it's an easy do they might be saving it for <laughs> probably yeah well that's true we were talking about bruce campbell let's actually move on and look at some alternate concept art from dr strange in the multiverse of madness uh there's one that we talked about right at the end of 2022 of uh, showing an alternate lineup of the Illuminati. It still had Peggy Carter as Captain America, and it looks like we had uh, Monica, or excuse me, Maria Rambeau as Captain Marvel, but we had uh, either an Iron Monger or Hydra Stomper armor in the Balder the Brave. And it sounds like Daniel Craig mm. was oh. going to be Balder the Brave based off what we saw. Mm. Were you guys satisfied with the Illuminati lineup we got, or do you think they could have done better? Yes, and I am one of the masses that it was satisfied because it was the Fantastic Four and X-Men. That right. is why I was satisfied. Yeah. That, cause it's like, we are gonna, we're gonna get these twos soon. I know we are, but I was very excited to finally get that nod that like, yes, we're gonna get the X-Men and we're gonna get Fantastic Four. Don't worry, it's coming. So I was content with yeah. it, but this would have been sick. Yeah, I think that signal was like, what made the actual Illuminati that we got like, amazing for me because it's just like yeah we we have the 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 fantastic four in mind they're going to play a, a crucial part to the mcu story leading up to secret wars so like basically it's like secret wars is going to be massive like we're going to have mutants we're going to have the fantastic four and i was like yeah let's go like like that whole scene where they mentioned incursions i was like the the possibilities here are endless with uh, the fantastic four and the secret war so yeah, I like what we got more than this, personally. They come with so much more extra baggage than these two. And uh, and, and uh, agreed, anyone can come at me and say, Jessica, that's wrong. But, uh, like, you even made the video about, like, all the instances we've had the opportunity that, like, Dr. Doom is coming. And I think that situation of, like, even uh, uh, Mr. Fantastic just, like, coming out of that box that belonged to Doom in the comic books is just enough to be like, ooh, where is this leading to? It can go anywhere. Right. It can go everywhere. So it gives us more baggage to work with. I agree. But that would have been sick. An iron suit would have been so sick. That that would have been so sick. Oh, that would have been, that so would have been cool. great just for the fit, for that seventh seat of the Illuminati, just to have some big clanking suit of armor, just to be really loud and and then no one could hear each other talk because he keeps shifting in his seat like ah right. Can you stop moving, <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> please. <laughs> Also, to watch Wanda tear him apart would have been oh. very entertaining. He would have been turned into like a can and then recycled or something. Oh, fun. Or she Bro. would have just like crashed him into a oh, rock. If it was skinny yeah. Steve in there, that would have been so no, sad. No, please, give me my armor back. <laughs> the, the, the moment in Infinity War where Thanos is blasting away Tony's nanotech armor and we're like, oh, no, 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 no. It's just flesh. He's just a weak man under there. What's going to happen? Like you could have had that where Wanda's just tearing apart the armor Ooh. piece by piece. And it takes off his skin Ooh, piece yeah. by piece, and then his muscle piece by piece, yeah. and then his bones one by yeah. one. Bro, but like if they did crush him and like the blood just started leaking out, <gasps> oh, that would have been no. like. Sam Raimi, Raimi wants that. <laughs> Sam, Sam, Sam Raimi wants that. He was like, oh, please, let me bring a cheese grater and grate his <laughs> or, or what about what happened to uh, the hammer tech guy in the suit where he just turned around? He's oh like, my God. And she just keeps doing that and keeps twist. twisting him around and then just like oh. pulling him apart. Oh my god. Uh, That's too much. Uh, That's rated R. Uh, <laughs> rated R for Raimi. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> there was some other beautiful concept art showing the alternate 838 universe where Wong actually joined Strange in America Chavez. That looked really cool. And then some other weird art of like Professor X looking like the, the X-Men animated series Professor X in the yellow hover chair, but like in a real dirty Blade Runner looking uh, Illuminati headquarters. Um, that's one thing that I wish uh, Multiverse of Madness explored more, the Illuminati headquarters and why it looks like the British Museum. Like, I want to know who built mm. that. Was mm. It seemed like it was the Baxter Foundation. So is Reed Richards into it or was that Charles Xavier saying like, I used to come here as a boy, looked at all things that our British colonizer ancestors took from the third world and put on display <laughs> for Victorian era British people to look at. And we never returned the pieces of the Parthenon and somehow that's okay. Like, I, I wonder if um if they knew Cersei from the Eternals at all, because like that was sort of her jam being a museum curator and like, you know, like that whole spiel, that's how she knew Dane Whitman. So I wonder if like they teamed up with Dane and Cersei and like maybe they passed away during the, um, during the Thanos thing, but I don't know. Have we uh, touched on whether or not the Eternals have gone through different timelines or have they just stayed in the same timeline the entire time? Because there's only one of them, right? There's not multiples of the Eternals. Yeah, there there are multiples. 
Um, there are? Well, like on Earth, there's only one batch on Earth, but like um, yeah. there are multiples on different planets. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of Buzz um, okay, Lightyears so there... in that World Forge. Yeah. And <laughs> okay. I will go sail. <laughs> no. I don't remember that concept art. <laughs> I don't remember that concept art, and I would rather not. You don't? I'll say no. I'll say no, thank you. Um, <laughs> Do you guys remember Randy Newman in the MCU? Oh, yes. Bring him into the MCU. <laughs> okay, sorry. Keep going. Um, so uh, I want to talk about the She-Hulk designs, but first, I want to thank the sponsors who helped us make this episode, starting with our friends at NordVPN. There are a ton of options in the MCU when it comes to telling the stories of some of our favorite heroes and villains, but when it comes to streaming movies and series online, you might feel like there are not a lot of options. One way to get more content options in your life is to check out NordVPN. With NordVPN, you can change your virtual location with just one click, which makes it easier to find the streaming platforms at a lower price. We can even access platforms that aren't even available in the US. With just one click, you can choose from over 5,400 servers in over 60 countries. NordVPN is there to make sure you never miss out on your favorite content, whether we're at home or traveling. And if you're worried that NordVPN might cause buffering when you're watching content, fear not. NordVPN provides amazing speed thanks to Nord Links, so you can stream securely without bandwidth throttling. NordVPN's benefits and features go way beyond improving your streaming experience. You can also access games and discounts only available in other regions and block malware-ridden websites while you explore securely. We encourage you to try NordVPN for yourself, so grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com marvel to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan, plus four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's N-O-R-D-V-P-N dot com slash Marvel for an exclusive discount plus four months free. And thanks to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this episode. Let's make 2023 the year of a good night's sleep. Here at New Rockstars, we trust Helix to protect our sleep with the best mattresses in the world. We all have Helix mattresses. We love them. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and your sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Everybody is unique. Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Mattress is great for spinal alignment to prevent morning aches and pains. And even the Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers. Actually, Kelly and I just rolled out uh, since we're you know now married. And uh, we are no longer living in sin, but we sh- we, <laughs> we actually uh, Hel- Helix got uh, we got a king size Helix mattress, and so far, oh, that's massive. Well, the um, I won't go into details, but we're we're getting some great. Stuff. <laughs> Just go to helixsleep.com slash inside marvel. Take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10 year warranty to get to try it out for 100 nights risk free. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash inside marvel. We also want to thank Hover for sponsoring this episode. If you've ever thought about starting your own business, creating a brand, or sharing what you know with the world, the first step is finding a domain name to get you off the ground. Hover makes creating a domain name super simple. You don't even know what you're doing to get started because Hover provides easy to use tools, a straightforward user experience, and if you ever need help, their super friendly support team is there to guide you. So give them a call and a real life person will assist you. Hover is a trusted and popular choice amongst millions of people launching any kind of brand, blog, or business. They even provide domain names that go beyond your standard .com. You can really make your endeavor stand out with extensions like .shop, .tech, .art, and more. They have over 400 domain extensions. Hover's connect feature makes it so simple to connect your domain name to lots of website builders with just a few clicks. If you're ready to get your ideas online, Hover has a domain name to make it happen. Head on over to hover.com slash marvel to get 10% off your first purchase. That's H-O-B-E-R dot com slash marvel for 10% off your first purchase. All right, let's look back at the She-Hulk concept art. Uh, I think we remember seeing these after She-Hulk wrapped. We had some alternate designs for K-E-V-I-N, Kevin, some uh, without the little ball cap, some with the ball cap just like perched Balanced on its head, not sliding around. <laughs> we also saw some alternate designs of Scar that, in my opinion, look way better than what we got. I, okay. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, look here. Look here. He does the best he can. He is a teen. He is a child. And when, when we see him next, he might look like this. We don't know how he ages. I'm tired of everybody scorching this poor boy. Yeah, I mean, this is an so instance hard. where, like, the concept art is clearly, clearly superior. Um, this I'm is sorry. not a teen. 
team. That is not, I don't care if that thing right there in that <laughs> concert art is supposed team. to be He's our age is quicker. He's he can be a grown team. man. Listen, all I need no, is the is scar hair. Man. And it wasn't there. Yeah. You know, no, that's all if I that needed. hair was on my boy's head, it'd be fine. It, I would be fine with that. I get the, I get the, I get you guys hating on his hairline <laughs> starting back here. But, <laughs> but that, that concept art, that looks older than the Hulk. That cannot no, be wait, scar he doesn't look that. Hulk's got some widow speaks. He's got the, uh, the salt and pepper coming in now. He has to wear glasses. <laughs> but I do love that scar. That is the scar I want to see eventually. That is the scar from the comic books that beats the crap out of the Hulk. Yeah. If you think about it, if Scar was on Sakaar, that rhymes, um, time works differently there, I feel. Like, time is weird there for some reason. Like, That's I feel like he could be an adult-looking man. No. Potentially. I agree. I agree. Eventually. Not right now. <laughs> this will be him in the next Give one. us little Scar. Not now. <laughs> Give us little Scar. <laughs> Baby Scar. But that concept art is great. I love that concept art. I want him to look like that eventually. That is that is the Scar I read that beat the crap out of his dad. Yeah. Yes. And then She-Hulk. <laughs> I want to see some green domestic violence. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> MT, you know what they do to us when we say things like that. They take us out of context. I'm they just kidding. my face. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no green domestic violence, green, everyone. <laughs> keep it. Keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> it's a brave stance, MT. No domestic <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Thanks, MT. No one's going to get mad now. That Kevin, though, is very fun. I love it, but I do love what they ended up with Kevin. I like the idea because it's if this guy is rewriting all of like television and movies for Marvel Cinematic Universe for all time, it makes sense that he has the most rickety form of video, like video formats. Yeah. And I love the idea of him being like, I've been here since it first began. Remember the rotoscope? <laughs> Remember this? Like, well, the rotoscope is still doing things, but I like the I like what they ended up with. But I do love mm. this little hat. Yeah, the little. I think in this concept funny. art, it looks a little too like uh, not humanoid, but organic, right? Like mm -hmm. you, you can't mm. really see which of those wires might actually be a bit fleshy or something like that. It looks too much like a cyborg. Yeah, and I want uh, Kevin to just be a nice, clean desktop assistant. Yo, yes. this looks like one of those robots from the Matrix, bro. This yeah. looks like it's like a villain. <laughs> yeah, that looks true. so menacing. <laughs> I'm Kevin with the. I I think it's very funny to put that hat on him, but I love yes. this. Like, I, I really just as an afterthought, just the, the tiniest little one. hat. It's just a hat. <laughs> It's just a hat, <laughs> just a little hat perched upon his little metal body. All right, we got to move on and talk about uh, the Thor Love and Thunder concept art. Before mm. Russell Crowe yes. was going to be Zeus, at some point yeah. he was going to be <laughs> Satan or a devil or Mephisto. The devil. One of the three. Look at this sexy beast. My Haitian mother's worst enemy. <laughs> So, this is my best enemy. This is my best friend. This is the, this is the keep your enemies closer. Look at him. Look at his little hoof feet. Look at how he's got oh like a, a foot just to munch on. He's eating it. Yeah, he's just you eating know, it. It's delicious, good protein. I support it. What I like about the idea of this was, do you think that they still had in, well, they had to have had in mind that he would still be the leader of the the gods, right? Or not the leader, but like yeah. the the host. Hey, that version the, of Thor Love that. and Thunder is way more metal than what we got. I think all we get out of Zeus is the fact that he's uh, he's Hercules' dad and it sets up Hercules. Yeah. Other than that, imagine, like, you know Taika Waititi wanted to do a version of this. is like, what if when we go to the omnipotent city, it's actually Satan that's running yeah. the show. Like, that, that's <laughs> yes. a version of the movie he wants and to do. there's orgies everywhere. <laughs> Didn't they cut out the scene with Dionysus? They also, did. There was a scene where like Dionysus, Dionysus is Dionysus. drunk. He's like, hey, let's party! <laughs> yeah, so, like, that feels like it feels more attached to this guy yeah. than it did our mm. Zeus. Our Zeus was just about the, the orgy and about his son being Hercules. But this one seems like it would have been fun to see this as a leader. Uh huh. That, like that would have been a fun thing to like introduce. It's like, hey, we just rotate who's in charge of the gods. So it's like now it's just the devil's turn. So here's the devil not caring about anybody. I love this. <laughs> but then it would have also opened so many freaking doors to like the uh, um, we would the underworld. We would have gone everything. crazy everything. if we saw this. <laughs> We would have been like, Mephisto has to be here. And, <laughs> and I think because they were, they're clearly cooking up something with Mephisto, maybe with Sasha Baron Cohen, yeah, you know, on, on Ironheart and Agatha Coven of Chaos. I think that's why. They didn't want any confusion. They wanted, yeah. yeah. 
One hundred percent. Agree. One hundred percent. But I love what you said. Was it? I think if you just said like it's his turn cover, like it's an HOA, like oh shit, yeah. it's Mephisto's <laughs> year as, as king of the gods. I'm He's waiting. the worst. It's like we've been sort of delaying this since the beginning of time. All right, you can have your turn. <laughs> it's like yeah. Speaking of things Mephisto should have been in, WandaVision, uh, we did see some concept art of Billy and Tommy disintegrating in Agatha's dungeon. That was from the finale episode. Billy and Tommy are just kind of like off screen for a lot of it. It's because they had this subplot where, you know, uh, Senior Scratchy was going to turn into like a werewolf style demon and chase them around in a dungeon. And this concept art proves that they, they did think about that. You see Ralph over there in the corner. You see Monica Rambeau figuring out what's going on. Uh, do, you, do you think we needed Senior Scratchy and Billy and Tommy running away from them in like this kind of a Goonies scene in the finale? I wanted more Senior Scratchy. And I think we yeah. talked about that during WandaVision. We all wanted more Senior Scratchy. We thought it was going to be a bigger part than what he was. But I also I, I I don't think the 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 twins running the kids running would have wouldn't have really added anything really yeah because we were too, we were so focused on this and then the other beeline storyline was Monica and Boner Ralph Boner so it was like I don't know if it would have added yeah you go on MTV I mean I I think that it would have added a little bit more to Billy and Tommy's like mm. presence on the show because like they had these superpowers they do superpowered kids. So, like, giving them, like, a sort of, like, an antagonist to, like, either run from or, like, fight together would have been really cool rather than, like, that very short moment where uh, Hayward shoots them and then Monica blocks the bullet. They didn't really get a whole lot to do. And, like, they, they, they obviously fought the those agents there. But, like, having that one sequence where it's like, all right, this is your sequence. You guys, like, just go crazy like kids. I would have loved to see that. But um, I do like WandaVision as it was. So it, it did flow nicely for me. Yeah. So I'm not super sad. Yeah. Yeah, it just would have been nice to get some kind of payoff with the rabbit, I think, because otherwise. Right. Yes. And I think that could come into play in, in in Agatha's show. Oh, yes. I think she's going to bring back Sparky. Oh, that'd be good. And then we're going to be like, that'd Sparky. Because so nice. anyone who. Give it to White Vision. Zombie. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the one holdup I have with Agatha Harkness is she killed a dog. And anyone who kills a dog is no hero hey, of mine. Hey, hey, I agree. But do you know how many cats die in shows and movies? Yeah. Alf ate cats. That's right. The Midnight Mass thing ate cats. <laughs> Everyone's eating cats. Well, <laughs> and I say this cats. as someone who loves kitty cats. I love cats. Uh, but love cats, cats, audiences are just more okay with dying. And I don't think that's a fair Look, standard. I'm just but... saying. You know what, Jess, you know who, who doesn't eat cats? Batman. So, uh, Batman. That's why <laughs> Batman's <below. laughs> I knew it. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I, I was like, someone, it's going to be someone that genuinely doesn't eat it. And it's Batman. It's Batman. Good job. Oh my Good God. job. Proud of you. MT, Keep it in. Keep it in. You post. win. You win this week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to talk about this concept art that just came out from uh, Endgame. Although maybe this is out, I just didn't see it. Well, there was going to be a shot where you start with Spider-Man and Hulk's palm. Hulk is going to be launching Spider-Man, throwing him, and then we zoom out, and Hulk is in Giant Man Scott Lang's palm. So it's like oh a throw, God. a throw, a throw, a triple assist. This would have been freaking awesome in the movie. Amazing. I would have loved that. Absolutely unreal. And it should have been in the movie. Like it would have been a really quick thing, but like people would have gone crazy for it. I would have loved it. Has uh, Ant-Man ever, I mean, technically they fought alongside each other, but they didn't really come in contact with each other because Hulk wasn't in Civil War, right? Yeah. yeah. Or is that the beginning of Infinity War? Uh, Peter saves Bruce, but Bruce hasn't hulked out. But Ant Man has Scott Lang. Oh yeah, and Ant like, doesn't know Hulk really. at all. In fact, like Bruce is like, "There's an Ant Man now." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, there's so, an Ant Man in the Spider Man, so like th that would have been an uh, even better payoff because he did mention mm -hmm. Ant Man and Spider Man. So like him working together with them would have been like, "All right, this is what we're doing now." Yeah. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I mean, we did get a bit of an assist. If you look closely in that end game battle charge, you know, I believe Spider-Man's swinging off of Ant-Man's hand or something like that. But it's not right. as cool as this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as cool. Well, he tears him down in Civil War. Spider-Man and uh, Ant-Man, he goes for his legs. Oh, like, yeah, the, he does. He trips him and up. And he mentions the, Star Wars. The, uh, uh. So they go, they're, they come in contact, but it's Bruce doesn't really. Doesn't, doesn't. This would have been, this would have been sick. All right, let's move on to Loki. We saw some concept art. We've talked about this in a ton of videos, but and he remains off as a Originally, there was going to be an Iron Man helmet on the shelf. How cool would we this have been? We talked about this? I, I know I brought it up in like four videos before. Yeah, we, we have talked about it before. I haven't seen this. I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, it's super they were going to put an Iron Man helmet on He Remains shelf in the Citadel office. 
to imply that, insane. like, you know, some trophy taken off he the can't... dead Avenger that he remains held onto was an Iron Man helmet. I just, I really like this detail because, like, um, in the Avengers uh, cartoon, um, Kang is like inspired by Tony Stark technology, um, and, and inspires a suit. And I feel like we, they, it could be very much the same here, just considering that we know that in Endgame, Tony Stark is the father of t- uh, time travel um, in the MCU. As far as you know, obviously, uh, he remains made it happen. So, like, I feel like he's just a huge fan of Tony Stark in general. So, yeah, I feel like this would have been really cool to see as a little detail. That would have been so fun. And also that, if that would have happened, and then we get Quantumania where he's like, have I not killed you yet? To Ant-Man. And it's like, (laughs) he's just killing through the Avengers. He's just ripping through y'all. That would have been so fun. Oh, God, that would have been so sick. It would have been cool if if he had, like, pieces of everyone's armor it's like yeah like the yes. wasp wings 100 percent, um, 100 <laughs> percent, like a hulk hand like a real hulk hand <laughs> that one you get from target <laughs> you know yeah fake you know this one this is why they they took it out they were like for continuity reasons but also like it's such a hassle probably being like should we do this they're like someone's gonna figure out that continuity wise this doesn't make sense <laughs> right yeah <laughs> put in Bucky's arm on there. I'm looking at you, James Gunn. I'm very upset about that still. Uh, it doesn't make <laughs> sense. And you can say whatever you want on Twitter. You can say it was all that holiday cheer, but it still doesn't make sense. All right, the last piece of concept art we're going to look at came from the art of Avengers Infinity War book, and it was some alternate concept art of Thanos fighting Doctor Strange in a wizard duel battle. We saw a bit of that in Infinity Ooh. War, but this one would have had Strange hitting Thanos' uh, forehead G-spot, and he would have taken him <laughs> through a crazy trip through the multiverse that would have looked insane, including including a trial in front of the Living Tribunal that declared Thanos guilty. Oh. What do you guys think? Would this oh, have made... That, that would have been, been freaking... Sick as, that would have been sick. Like, uh, whenever we go to, like, the uh, higher levels of, like, Marvel, like, cosmic stuff, like, I get so excited. Like, when seeing Eternity in Thor 4, I was like, this is a big deal, guys. Like, this is, like, Mm -hmm. massive. So, like, seeing the Mm -hmm. Living Tribunal, like, judging Thanos, like, I would have freaking, that would have touched my G-spot. I would have creamed my jeans. I like the idea of just, like, my favorite things are, like, one-on-one fights when it's equal. And, I mean... Not really equal against Thanos, but like I do think this would have been fun to take him to a different, literally like a wizard duel, like off to a different planet in front of the living tribunal. I think that's sick as hell. But also it's like the Avengers movie was clearly, it's a team sport. It's a team movie. Iron Man is a lot of the like fixation. So I don't think they would have done that because it would have been more about Doctor Strange. But God, that would have been sick as hell. You're, yeah, you're totally right. And we got a version of this in Multiverse of Madness. You know, they did the whole multiverse hopping montage. And then we saw Strange fighting his alternate self with music notes, which was wild. So fun. Super cool. But like, just, I mean, seeing everything everywhere all at once. Congratulations, by the way, on your Oscar nominations. Mm. We're all so happy My for you all. My favorite movie of all times. It needed more mm. nominations. So, so good. Give it all the nomination. But just the scenes where Joy is fighting Evelyn and every hit is knocking them through a different reality was mwah, so much fun. Mm-hmm. I love perfect. that. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. This could have been it. Okay, well, all of you watching, we want to know which of these alternate versions of the movie the concept art would you prefer to what we got in the movie we know there's a lot of other concept art that out there maybe we'll do a part two to this episode sometime in the future but jessica mt thank you so much for joining me this episode it's been a delight thank you this has been great yeah. you can follow jessica at lulu underscore clemens you can follow mt at master you can follow me at ea boss you can follow all the deep dive updates at deep dive nr and subscribe to the deep dive channel deep dive nr subscribe to inside marvel wherever you get your podcasts of course subscribe to new rock stars a bunch of amazing stuff is gonna be coming this year on the new rock stars channel we're all so excited share it with you and we'll all see you next week bye bye everybody Peace out. Bye. 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 Bye.